good morning everyone how you doing and welcome to talking church today a little bit different today normally on talking church i've got some guests with me a guest with me we chat some stuff through but this morning i thought let's do something a little bit different let me just share something from my journal to you today to encourage you just from the climate or the moment that we sense we're in at church at the moment but before we dig into that i want to give a massive welcome to some people that are watching so why don't you take a moment to if you're watching on facebook uh, just to say hi let us know where you're watching from and um get yourself a cup of coffee cup of tea get your bible out and just scribble down we got some people watching from all over the place today and we got the ford students downstairs watching as well <coughs> they're down in the main hall as we're doing this so it's good to have them with us other people jumping in and join us and of course others will be watching on catch up today and uh, we want to welcome you whether you're watching live or whether you're watching on catch up so today you've got me that's it no guests just me and a thought I want to share with you, if that's okay. We had another amazing Sunday. <coughs> Excuse me. We had another amazing Sunday, the one just gone, where there was such an atmosphere of expectancy that right away from the moment we started our praise and our worship, you could just feel the electricity of the presence of the Lord. And again, we're reading, aren't we, about all over the different parts of the country, America, Venezuela, Philippines, just moments where it seems like the Spirit of God is breaking out in a new and a fresh way. And that excites my heart so very much. Okay, we've got some people coming through now we've got someone watching from Plymouth hello David we've got Sandy watching from Waterlooville we've got the Forge guys watching from downstairs and um, gonna have the guys from New York watching welcome 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 so yeah like I was saying <clears throat> Sunday there was such an expectancy that God was doing something not just in the meeting but on the face of the earth and that just thrills my heart and then spontaneously during our worship we really felt God restore a shout back to his people, a shout back into the camp. <clears throat> and it was really powerful because, you know, sometimes you try to say, hey, come on, let's give a shout to the Lord. And it lasts about a second and people go, half a room go, oh, uh, or shout Jesus. This was different. I really felt we were singing a song. And the verse was, you know, when I lift my mouth and shout, you know, miracles and stuff starts breaking out. And I just said, <clears throat> church, come on, God's putting a shout back in the camp. Maybe we've gone through seasons where your shout was removed or your shout was lost. But God's putting a shout back in to his camp, to his people. And I spoke about just uh, spontaneously how when the children of Israel went into battle, they would shout before they got to the enemy, and the enemy would hear the shout of God's people <clears throat> and be terrified, confused, and run even before they got into uh, the children of Israel, even got into the battle. And I really sensed on Sunday that God was putting a shout back in to his people's hearts, a shout that comes from knowing who we are in Christ, knowing this Kairos moment we're in, knowing the authority that he's given us. But, you know, sometimes I think we can all get in that rut where we're saying, God, the enemy's picking on me or the enemy's doing this. Would you go and talk to him? And not that Jesus can't, but I think sometimes God says to us, you talk to him. You tell him to clear off. You tell him to buzz off. And I really sensed on Sunday, it was so powerful because the people began to shout to the Lord, literally shout to the Lord. <clears throat> and it wouldn't stop. It just kept on going. It just kept on going because the Spirit of God was really on that moment. And I really believe that was a moment where a lot of things were released. And we're living in a moment where, hey, good morning, New York. Good morning to the guys downstairs. Good morning, Stowe Market. Good morning, Portsmouth. So good that you're, uh, you're writing in. Hey, comment. Let us know what you're thinking. This is just me and you today. We've got no guest to get in our way. So why don't you just write in and uh, let me know some things that God's doing in your life in that moment. And if we get a chance, we'll read those out as well. But I want to focus that this is, like I've been saying over and over and over again the last few weeks, this is a Kairos moment. This 
is a moment where God is on the move on the face of the earth in a fresh way. God is moving through his church. Remember, the church isn't a building. The church isn't um, a meeting. The church is God's people, but God is moving <clears throat> in a fresh way across the church. And I don't know about you, I, I want to be fully awake and a part of what he's doing. These are exciting days in which we're living. Now, here's my question for you today. I've got a question. You can have a sip of water. Here's my question or my thought, and I was just journal journaling this today, and I thought this would be brilliant for talking church. Now, God is on the move. Aslan is on the move, as I've said. <clears throat> I was away preaching in Torquay at the weekend on the Saturday. Really felt God moving, God doing something fresh. I was ministering to uh, pastors from the southwest region up there in Devon. And then on Sunday morning, like I said, I felt God moving in a fresh way, powerful. And I'm like, oh, this is just so exciting. This is everything we've been praying for for years. But then this morning, I thought, well, God may be moving in power, <clears throat> but he leaves the choice with us, you and me, at what depth we want to experience him moving. Isn't that a powerful thought that God isn't waiting for permission? God's not asking for us to say, OK, Lord, God is moving. God is moving in power in a fresh way. The breath of God is blowing in a fresh way. But I'm noticing that some Christians uh, are really experiencing God moving in a fresh way and their hearts are being touched, their lives are being transformed Meanwhile, sometimes in the same room, you have Christians that are just like still clapping along, singing a few songs, singing along with whatever the band is singing. But their hearts <clears throat> don't to seem to be as engaged in what God's doing as maybe the person next to them or the person in front of them. And that's when I realized many times God leaves it to us determine the depth or the level that we experience him at. Yet he's a God of many levels. Now, I want to read to you a random verse today um, from Psalm, uh, Psalms 42. And I love this. When you read Psalms 42, it opens up with that first verse in verse one, <clears throat> as the deer pants for the water, so my soul longs after you, O God. That's the well-known opening verse of Psalm 42. And different writers or different theologians believe different people wrote it. I know if you look to the Strong's Concordance, um, they really believe that David was the writer of this psalm. And David was writing it at the moment when he couldn't go to the temple because of things that were going on in his life with Saul. Yet there was a desperation in him to be in God's house, to be with God's people. <clears throat> so if we just agree today, hey, what if it was David? It could have been someone else. But the principle remains the same here. This psalm was written by somebody who was desperate for God. And if it was David, I can imagine him sitting there saying, God, I'm really thirsty for you. God, I'm thirsty. My soul, everything within me is longing for you. Other things have left me dry. Other things have disappointed me. God, I need you. And he's trying to articulate or put into words this longing or this desperation in his heart for more of God. And I don't know if he suddenly saw a deer walking across a plain somewhere near a river brook, but he suddenly says, that's it. God, just as that deer is panting to be revived and refreshed by living streams. That is how my soul, everything within me is thirsting, God, not for the things of this world, but for you today, God. When can I come into your presence? When can I come back in to that moment of being revived by you? I love that. So when we read Psalms 42 without doing a Bible study on the chapter, it opens up with these incredible words, as a deer pants for streams of water. <clears throat> my soul, everything within me, my God, thirsts for you, the living God. 
When can I go and meet with you, God? My tears have been my food day and night. Uh, While people say to me all day long, where is your God? These things I remember as I pour out my soul. And he just begins to speak from this longing within. But then he makes this statement, and it's this statement I just want to spend some time with you, the Talking Church family, with today. Those who are watching live, those who are going to watch it a little bit later on. But it really stood out to me. I was just sitting there writing in my journal this morning. And in verse 7, he makes this statement. Deep calls unto deep. Deep calls unto deep. In the roar of your waterfalls... All your waves and breakers have swept over me. I love that, reading that from the NIV. Deep calls unto deep in the roar of your waterfalls. That's where I want to be, don't you? I want to be in the roar of his waterfalls. All your waves and breakers are sweeping over me. All right, now stay with me. Deep calls unto deep. Who sets the level of depth desire in us for God? I believe the Holy Spirit always inspires within us if we allow him, if we don't resist him, if we don't quench him. He creates in us an appetite for more of God. That's normal. It's actually not normal for a Christian to not want more of God. That's when we hardened our hearts or got distracted by things in this world. But the level that we know God as is often set by us. Now, deep calls unto deep. God wants to speak from the depth of who he is to the depth of who you are. But if you don't want to walk deep or if we don't want to walk deep with God, God will speak to the level or the layer that you're allowing him to be Lord of. So, great statement, deep calls unto deep, but also shallow calls unto shallow. If a person wants a surface relationship with God, God's desire is for them to have more, but God loves whatever the layer or level a person gives him access to, But many times, if you just want a shallow, surface relationship with God, how can God speak from the depth of who he is into the depth of who you are when you only want to do surface with him? Now, God still speaks, but so so often it's just that surface relationship where the longing of God is to be speaking into the very core, the very heart of you, the situations you face. So what am I saying today? God is a God of layers. <clears throat> now, if any of you have got children, or maybe you haven't got children, you probably remember the, the, um, the, 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 uh, the film Shrek spoke about layers, didn't he? Remember, <clears throat> Shrek was that, that ogre in, in that film. And he would say, you know, ogres are like onions. They have layers. Now, please, I'm not comparing God to an ogre. Please don't be putting that all over Facebook that I called God an ogre. But I'm just using that quote that Shrek said, you know, ogres are like onions. They have, la- they have layers. Now, we've all experienced an onion. We've all had tears caused by an onion. But if you were to take an onion today and cut through that onion suddenly you see that there's many layers to an onion and there's surface layers and there's core layers and many layers in between surface and core. What if we're like onions too and there's many layers to who we are as a people and God has many layers to him and he corresponds the layer of who he is to the layer that we are wanting to know him by. Yet the whole time God is speaking to us. I want to speak to deeper places in your life. I want to speak to deeper layers of who you are from the deeper places of who I am. Now, God gave man free will. 
That was how he created it. He didn't want us to be a people that loved him robotically without any choice. <clears throat> the whole journey of Adam and Eve and the choice they had in the garden, the fall of man, the redemption of man, was all around this issue of God giving man made in his image and likeness choice, the ability to choose. Now, we choose... Isn't that incredible that a sovereign, supreme, omnipresent God who is a God of many layers, bottomless layers, you'll never get to the full depth of God. He says to us, how deep do you want to walk with me? How deep do you want my words to penetrate your life? How deep do you want to connect with me in times of worship? Again, that leaves the tennis ball in our court. That leaves us with the next chess move. So often people are like, God, you need to move. God, you need to move. Where often if we could hear him, his response would be, I've moved. It's your move now. How much more of me do you want? Do you want to stay on a surface relationship, a, a, a lesser level relationship in this onion of experience? Or do you want to come to the stronger core of who I am? Do you want to pull away from the crowd that just has a sing-along moment with me and spend times of worship in more intimacy? The choice is with us. Now, when we speak about deep calling unto deep, we can refer to water, can't we? That water has different measurements and different depths to it. So I suppose what I'm trying to say is today that if you want a splash pool relationship with God, which is very shallow, ever been to a splash pool where there's just jets of water? Normally splash pools are meant for children, babies. But a splash pool is an experience of water and getting wet, of depth, but a very shallow one. But you know the goodness of God? He says, if you just want to do splash pool with me, I'll meet you in the splash pool. And you can experience me in that depth of knowing. <clears throat> or maybe we could go to a river where it was waist high and we could go in. Now, waist high is better than a splash pool. But still in waist high, you have an element of control. You choose, do I go left, do I go right, do I go upstream, do I go downstream? <clears throat> it's not until you go deeper that you just go where the river's taking you. So again, that's another layer or depth, isn't it? It's better than the splash pool, but yet it's not fully abandoned. It's not enjoying the depths you've not yet known in God. And so you could go splash pool. God will meet you there, splash around with you if that's what you want. Shallow end life with God. That's your choice. God will meet you there. This isn't about his love for you. It's about your experience of him. Or you could go deeper where you're kind of up to your waist or, or, or the mid of who you are, still somewhat in control, determining the when and the hows. Or you could go to the deep end. Listen, it's in the deep end that you find things you never knew could be found. Let me just cultivate a hunger in you today. It's in the deep end you see things you've never seen. I've done a lot of different stuff in my life and uh, always after an adventure, you know me, I've walked with lions, I've done all manner of different stuff. And in the years that I was away from God, I took up sub -aqua diving. And that's where they stick a couple of air tanks on your back, <coughs> a regulator in your mouth, and you go into the water. And um, I started diving, and the, the limit that you can go to when you're sub -aqua diving is around 50 meters. That's what you can do on air. Then you have to go to heliox and different chemicals of air makeup to go deeper if you're in the Navy or whatever. But I took up deep sea diving or, or sub -aqua diving, and uh, I tried it in England. That was a little bit pointless because you didn't really ever see much if you went down 10 meters or, you know, 15 meters, unless it was a clear day, you never really saw much. There were fish there, but you didn't really see them that much. But one time I went over to Malta, the Isle of Malta, actually to the region called St. Paul's. Imagine that. <clears throat> I'm in my backslidden years, and I'm in St. Paul's 
Eagles Bay in Mota. But I was there to dive, not pursue the Lord, sadly. And I spent a month diving there with a group of friends. And in Malta, somebody said, Andy, do you want to do a 50-meter bounce? And a 50-meter bounce is when you go 50 meters down, which is the limit that you're meant to go to with air and the air tanks that you're using. And it's actually hard work because you spend so long going down to literally touch the bottom. And then you spend ages coming up and you have to stop at different stages to decompress and let the nitrogen out of your body. So it's almost like an accomplishment rather than an enjoyable experience. But boy, when you're down there at that pressure, you're breathing that air and you're watching the gauge. It's like breathing treacle. So apart from that 50 meter bounce, I was diving a lot in Malta. And I was going 15 meters, 10 meters, 20 meters. But it was different to diving in the United Kingdom. <clears throat> you had these ledges. And in St. Paul's Bay in Malta, you would go in the water, swim out a little bit, go underwater, uh, go 10 meters, 15 meters, 20 meters. And then you would come to this ledge. And it was like a sheer drop where you could hardly see the bottom and you would dive down. And again, I dived through the windows and Gozo where you went in in a river and came out in the ocean. That was an amazing experience. But what, I, what I'm trying to say is when I went deeper, 15 meters, 20 meters, 30 meters, I started to see things that I wouldn't see in the shallow end. I started to see fish. I started to see urchins. I started to see sea life that you don't see or don't experience in the shallow of diving. If you're snorkeling, you won't experience some of the things that you see 20 meters, 30 meters down. And that's my comparison today. All swimming is good. Snorkeling is good, but after a while, there's got to be a hunger in your heart. God, I want to come deeper with you. I want to experience deeper levels where the deep of who you are speaks to a deeper place in me. This is a moment when you leave the crowd to some degree and go into personal pursuit. God, I want more of you. You know, the Bible says, taste and see the Lord is good. Now, when you taste and see the Lord is good, it should provoke in you an appetite for more. It really should. This is an unusual talk in church, isn't it? But I think we're having a good time this morning. When, when you taste and see the Lord is good, it provokes in you an appetite, a desire for more. Um, just a journey within us. I want more. I want more. That's, that's normal, I believe. Now, are we going to, in this moment, and every person has to answer for themselves, in this moment when God is moving in a fresh and new way, stay in the experience or depths or levels we've known with him, or are we going to hear the call of the Spirit, come deeper. If you've known five meters, come to ten. If you've gone through three layers, open up another three layers in your life. Move to the core of the onion. Don't settle for surface experience. But like I said, no one can make anyone do that. God designed it, but we couldn't make anyone do that. But I pray today that as the Spirit of God is moving, not just on the earth, but in our churches and in our lives, it's causing an appetite deeper in you, Jesus. Now, another thing I've discovered is <clears throat> his Bible, his word. So you can know God in different layers. You can go deeper and deeper and deeper with God and never reach the bottom. But also with his word, it's amazing that... His word has layers. You know, sometimes people say to me, Andy, I read the verses you read, but I don't see what you see. It's because the Bible is a supernatural book. It's not a natural book. It's not like your dictionary. It's not like your philosophy books. It's not like your recipe books. It's not like any other book. 
It's supernatural. And just as God has layers to who he is, so his word has layers that we can experience when we're reading it. So, again, if you want a surface layer of reading God's word, you just treat it like a book. You just go, all right, here's another book, John 3.16, for God so loved the world, that's my reading for the day. You've read it, you've partook, you've had an experience, but you've not had a full experience according to what God would have you to have. See, the Holy Spirit has been given to us to lead us into all truth. Another way of putting that would be that the Holy Spirit has been given to us to bring us into deeper layers of truth. You've heard me teach on this before, that you can know the word as the Logos, which is the written word of God. It's all true. It's all written. It's all God breathed. Or you can know the rhema of God. And the rhema of God is like that moment when the Holy Spirit breathes on a verse and it, it comes alive and speaks to something in the core of who you are and not just your mind. Come on, we've all read the Bible, read something, and it's had an impact on our mind, on our human reasoning, on our human intellect, but didn't really cut to the heart or the core of who we are. But then at another time, maybe we're praying, Holy Spirit, help me to hear what you're saying. And you, you can read that very same verse. And all of a sudden you're like, from the depth, from a deeper place in you, whoa, whoa, God, that's like you just added that to this book. It's like I've read it for the first time. Okay, what's happening? You're no longer in a splash pool experience with God and his word. You've now come into the river or you're deep sea diving and you're finding hidden treasures. You see, if you go sub aqua diving, if you go treasure hunting in the ocean, you don't find treasure floating 10 meters down on its own. You go to the riverbank and that's where you begin to find the treasure. In the same way, God has placed within his holy word treasure to be found by his people. But treasure isn't found by splash pool children. You just find some things that were left on the side. We're in a moment where deep is calling unto deep. God is speaking to us as his people. You may have known splash pool. You may have done river wading, waist high moments. I've got more for you. Let go of the bank. Come deeper. Dive deeper in me. Find places in worship that leave you going, what just happened? Where God broke through your mind and you began to worship him from the deep of who you are. Spirit calling unto spirit. The worshipping in spirit and in truth. Where in your prayer times you're like, Whoa, I'm lost for words here. God, I feel you're moving and I don't know what you're doing. But also when we're reading the Bible, I, I really believe that God wants to take you and me to deep places, not deep religious places. Oh, my God, who needs them? Or deep theological. I understand the theology of that now. No, no, deep places, when you're reading his word, it's suddenly like you've passed through the layers of an onion. I keep holding up <laughs> this imaginary onion, but just imagine this imaginary onion in my hands right now, right, with its multiple layers. And if I cut an onion in half and I held half with this hand and half with this hand, and I said that the layers of each half 
a calling to the other layers in the other half. That's a good image of God from the depth of who he is, calling to deeper places in you. Come on, come deeper. In this moment where Aslan is on the move, where the Spirit of God is doing something fresh and new on the earth. Don't settle for the depth and the levels you've known in previous moments. Get your air tanks on. Come on, get your face mask on. Set your heart on going on a pilgrimage of greater depth. You see, the way of the righteous winds ever upwards. It changes in its levels as you're in pursuit with God. So uh, these are some thoughts I got this morning. I just wanted to share them with you, just to encourage you, not, not to judge you in any way. <clears throat> hey, any level that you've got with God is a good one. But I don't want you to think that you've reached Zion, that you've reached the ultimate experience that you can have with God, because that would be a deception and a lie. No one can get to the core and the depth of who God is, even in their greater pursuit, because he remains the omnipresent, all-powerful, all-knowing God, supreme above all things. Yet he invites his creation. Come on in and know me better. I hope that stirs you today. I hope that stirs you just to, even after this moment together in talking church, just to go find a place and say, God, I want to come deeper. To open your Bible and go, I don't want to, I don't want to read this just like a book. Hey, Andy said that this, this is a supernatural book with layers. God, I want to move through deeper layers with you. I want... This book, not just to be logos, words written by you for direction and instruction, but I want to begin to feel the warmth of your breath on the words that I read as if I'm in a room with you alone and you're speaking those words from the depth of who you are into the depth or the deeper layers of me. I believe God will always answer a prayer like that because his word promises us blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. They shall be satisfied. Another translation says they shall be filled. The good news is we don't have to be in a building for this to happen because like I've been sharing in church, I'm so excited that the Holy Spirit that's moving in Kentucky and Alabama, Philippines, Venezuela, all over the world where the Spirit is moving, he's the same Holy Spirit who lives in me also, who lives in you also. The good news is you don't have to go somewhere in the world to experience the moving of the Spirit. You can go somewhere to honor the moving of the Spirit, but never let that be at the cost of you not understanding. There's one Holy Spirit, the same Holy Spirit that's moving in those places so wonderfully is the one that lives in you and calls you his temple. Deep calls unto deep. The Holy Spirit, I believe, is calling us all, come deeper. The Word of God is calling, come deeper. Why? Because the Lord wants to reveal treasures that are hidden in here. Now, the funny thing about God is he doesn't ever hide himself not to be found. But I do believe he hides himself to find who can be bothered to come and look for him. I really do. Why can some people read the Bible and get things and other people read it and don't seem to get anything? Often it's because the first person is in pursuit of God. I want to know you more. I want to need to know you more. Where the second person can just be reading out of duty. I've used this comparison before, but I think it's a good one, so I use it again. If you imagine uh, a Victorian costume drama 
where there's a beautiful Victorian lady, maybe in a lovely silk flowing dress, and there's a gentleman in his top hat that has an affection or um, a love for this young lady. And then suddenly in this kind of uh, pride and prejudice kind of scenario, she leaves the main hall and goes running into a maze, knowing that the young man is watching. Is she running in the maze to get away from him because she's scared or doesn't want anything to do, doesn't want to be found? No, often she'll be running into a maze not to hide, but just to hide enough to see if anyone will come and seek her out. I believe in the same way. That's the way that God hides from us. He's not hidden not to be found. He's hiding to see if anybody can be bothered. If anyone wants to leave surface level and come deeper. If anybody wants to leave the splash pool for a greater experience. Because the Bible says, knock and the door will be open to you. Seek and you will be found. I believe that this is an incredible moment for us all to be setting our hearts on seeking the Lord in a fresh way. Seeking the Lord in worship in a greater way, a deeper level than we ever have before. Reading his word with an expectation like a deep sea diver to find treasures others haven't found yet. To be walking with him in prayer Just saying, God, I don't want to do a surface thing with you anymore. Now, when you cut through an onion, you always start on the surface. But then you make your way deeper in. In the same way, every one of us started with a surface relationship with God. What I want to put to you today is none of us were ever meant to stay at a surface level with God. From the depth of who he is... Deep calls unto deep today. Come find me. Come experience me. Come know me in a way you've never known me before. Oh, what a privilege that the creator of all things beckons us to come and know him in greater intimacy and understanding than that which we've yet known. This should affect our worship. This should affect our Bible reading. This should affect our prayer life. Today, deep is calling unto deep. Now, let me just end with this, another verse. In Revelations 19, verse 6, there's this other unusual statement, that he is the voice of many waters. Now, there's different ways to translate that verse. But when I think about what we're saying today, that could be really comparable to this verse, couldn't it? But God is the God of many waters. The voice, it says he's the voice of many waters. What if we unpack that today, that God was saying, I love everyone that belongs to me. I'm the voice to those who want to walk shallow with me. I'm the voice of those that want to walk a little bit deeper. And I'm the voice of those that want depth and core relationship with me. He's the voice of every person at whatever layer or level they may be living in. But I also want to close today by saying he constantly calls, come deeper, come deeper. Hey, I hope you've enjoyed that today. I'm going to have a look at a couple of your comments. Different people saying this is speaking to their heart. Somebody saying they're in pursuit of him. Uh, Different people saying amen. People being encouraged today. I'm so glad. Amen, amen, amen. People loving this. Oh, that's great. Hey, I'm glad you had a good time today. Let me pray for you as we close. Father, I thank you today for every person that's watching live and every person that's watching on Catch Up. That deep of who you are calls to the deep of who we are. 
But God, you want to bring us through layers of experience to deeper places. I pray for every person that's watching today that we would all move down a layer of further away from surface, closer to the core. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Continue to speak deep unto deep today, we pray. Let our hearts long for you as a deer pants for the water. God, may we find our satisfaction in you alone. Amen, amen, amen. Well, I hope you enjoyed that today. Like I said, it was a talking church with a difference today. Next week, I'm going to be joined again by a special guest, somebody that's uh, coming over from Australia to spend some time with us at the church and, uh, and work with our teams and minister to the people here. And uh, I'm going to be interviewing him next week, and uh, you're going to have a great week. But I hope you have an amazing week of going deeper in God. See you next week, same time, same place for Talking Church.